Hello everyone and welcome back to the Angular University. In this new section of the course, we are going to be covering Angular Signals. A signal is a new reactive primitive that allows us to build Angular applications in declarative reactive style. It is going to be integrated with the Angular change detection mechanism and it's going to allow us to optimize a lot the runtime performance of our application. So let me talk about for a moment how the Angular default change detection mechanism works which is true we already discussed it earlier on in the course but just as a reminder I prepared here extremely simple example that just has a counter here and we are incrementing it using an increment button so if I click here the counter value is getting updated and if we check here our application component this is just a counter which is a number and the increment function called here by the button is just incrementing the counter so we just have here a plain mutable javascript variable that is getting mutated here whenever we click on the button that triggers the increment click handler now this application is using default change detection and that comes with a series of issues the problems introduced by the default change detection mechanism are not noticeable of course in such a small application and you can even build huge applications using the default change detection mechanism the issue Issues will only show when you are starting to build pages that have a lot of components with a lot of template expressions. That's when you might run into certain performance issues. These are caused because of the way that the default change detection system works. So if we go here to our component, we can see that we have here some data in our component, the counter data. And we can see that there is some action on the page that is mutating the data, right? The increment button here. Now, how does Angular know that it needs to update here the page? So this HTML here on the page needs to be updated after clicking on increment. The question is, how does Angular even know that this component here needs to be updated, that the content of the page is no longer up to date with the data? How does Angular detect that? Well, with default change detection, there is really no other way that Angular has other than well, with Angular default change detection, the only way to detect that something has changed in these circumstances is to really check the whole component tree of the page and compare all the values of all the expressions before and after the click. And that will tell Angular what has changed and Angular will know how to update certain parts of the page. Why does Angular have to perform this expensive calculation in order to detect what should be updated the answer is very simple because we are using our data here and we are just declaring it as a plain JavaScript variable that is mutable the problem is that almost anything on the page could have mutated this data and also this data could have been used anywhere on the page there is really no way for angular to know or to be sure that this variable here was only used on this particular component and nowhere else Else. This could have been shared via a service with other parts of the application. So there is really no way for Angular to know what should be updated when an event occurred, such as, for example, when a button got clicked. So that is why the only solution that the default change detection mechanism has is to compare all the values of all the expressions before and after the click, then determine what needs to be updated and then update the parts of the page that need to be updated so as you can imagine having to calculate the difference between the whole component tree before and after a relevant event that is a computationally expensive so as you can imagine having to compare all the values before and after a relevant event in order to determine what needs to be updated that is a quite expensive operation in terms of cpu and resources in the browser where angular is running so if your page gets large if it starts to have a lot of components, if it starts to have a lot of data and a lot of expressions for Angular to evaluate, you might run into some performance issues. Now, I know that we have also covered before in this course the alternative change detection mechanism, which is on push change detection. All right. Now, with on push change detection, we have a whole different set of problems. Yes, it's much more efficient than the default change detection mechanism. But but it's also, as we 
have seen much harder to use. There is a series of pitfalls that we have to watch out for. We shouldn't mutate the data directly. We need to make sure that if a component is receiving an input and it's using on push, we cannot mutate an object. If you pass it as input, we need to provide another version of the object, etc. Or alternatively, we have to use a state management library that makes it easier to use on push. That is also something that comes with its own set of issues. It makes the whole code more complicated and hard to maintain. Now, what if I told you that Angular has a better way of detecting what needs to be updated in the page? I'm talking, of course, about Angular signals. So a signal is a new Angular reactive primitive that allows us to, in general, write applications in declarative style. It makes it really easy to detect what has changed on the page. That is useful in general in order to build our applications in a more declarative style, but it will be especially interesting for Angular to be able to detect immediately what has changed on the page and update only the parts of the page that need to be updated. So Angular will no longer have to scan the whole component tree in order to identify what needs to be updated. Instead, we are going to refactor our application. So we're going to refactor this simple example in order for our code to tell Angular what has changed. And this way, Angular will know how to update the page in the most optimal way without having to perform potentially expensive operations such as scanning and diffing the whole component tree. All right, so that's our introduction to signals. Why are they useful? Why Angular has provided a new signal reactive primitive? So in our next lesson, what we're going to do is we are going to take this simple component and we're going to refactor it into signals. So we are going to implement it using signals. And from there, we are going to talk about the different types of signals, how to derive signals from another signals, how to detect changes in a signal. So that is one of the most interesting properties of signals. It's very easy to detect when a value has changed on the page. We're going to learn about that as well. And in general, in the remainder of this section, we are going to learn about best practices, patterns and pitfalls. So everything that you need to know in order to use Angular signals in your own applications. So without further ado, let's get started with Angular signals.